what the heck is pointed pen? I feel like as a calligrapher, this is a really funny question because when you've been doing it for a while, you forget how weird pointed pen looks and how weird that sounds for people who have never done it before. And because of that, people are intimidated by pointed pen, but you do not have to be. I'm Becca with The Happy Ever Crafter, and in this video, I'm gonna break down for you as succinctly as I can what pointed pen is, how to use it, and why you would want to. Spoiler alert, you'd want to because it's amazing and it's so much fun, and it's exactly what got me hooked on calligraphy. So let's jump into it. All right, first thing, what is pointed pen? Pointed pen is essentially this, this tool, or these tools, or these tools. <laughs> Pointed pen is just the pen you use with a nib to write in calligraphy. So long story short, pointed pen is the device that you write with. So this is a holder, this is a nib. When you put them together, this is a pointed pen setup. So when someone says they're doing pointed pen calligraphy, it means they're using this setup of tools. Number two, why would somebody want to use pointed pen? Specifically, why would somebody want to use pointed pen instead of a brush pen? Well, a couple reasons. Number one, it is stunningly beautiful. You cannot get the fine hairlines and the beautiful lines that you can get with a pointed pen with a brush pen. You just can't replicate it. There are some brush pens that look sort of the same way, but it's never going to be the exact same. Pointed pen is so delicate and so beautiful and it's actually really fun to use. It's something totally different that you're not so used to, and it requires you to calm down, and it's really soothing, and it's just really zen. People really love it for that. It's also way more versatile than you think. So let's say you're a, a wedding calligrapher and somebody wants you to write on something really small or really delicate, or they want a specific color of ink, or they want you, know, they want you to write on a surface that's challenging to do with different types of pens. That's where a pointed pen can come in handy. It's actually very, very helpful if you're trying to write on weird surfaces or write really tiny, and you can mix your own colors of ink and you can do all sorts of things with it. So although it's harder to get set up and to get used to at the beginning, it's actually really, really versatile if you get used to using it on different types of surfaces. All right, next important question is how does it work? So this is sort of a weird looking device and it looks even weirder when you use it in what's called an oblique holder, which is the one with this extra little angled piece on it called a flange. So a pointed pen works mostly because of the nib. So the nib has this little hole in the top of it called a reservoir hole, and that's what holds the ink in. And a pointed pen specifically, a pointed nib, the tines on it, these are called tines at the end here, these, these um, pointed things, they flex when you push on them. If I bring this up closer on my nail and I, and I show you, if I push on it, those tines spread apart. So that the hole in the top of it is holding the ink, and then if you push on the pen, those tines spread and the ink flows through there. So you can control how thin or how thick you want that line to be by changing the pressure on the nib. All right, point number four, how do you set it up? Well, on top of just sliding the nib into the holder and dipping it in ink and going, there's actually a couple pieces that you would never learn unless you actually looked into this. So a lot of beginners will find these tools and then they'll just dip the ink in and go and it doesn't work and it's really, really frustrating. And so that's a part that's really important to learn from somebody who knows how to do calligraphy because there's one little step that makes a huge difference and that is actually prepping your nib. So if you've never used, if this is a brand new nib out of the container and you've never used it before, it comes from the factory coated in oils and that protects the steel. But when you go to use it, when you dip it in the, in the ink, those oils will cause the ink to just fall off the nib and it won't stick properly. So you need to prep your nib. There are lots of different ways you can do this. Some people will stick it in a potato and the starches in the potato will break down the oils and then you wipe it off. So you, you might see calligraphers with a potato on their desk. Other calligraphers, there's a method where you burn the nib. You just run it through a flame for a second and then wipe it off. You can do lots of different things. You can use toothpaste, dish soap, whatever. Just something that's gonna be gritty enough and remove the oils on the nib. My favorite these days is to use alcohol or acetone and a Q-tip. So this is a brand new nib and I'm just gonna get a little bit of acetone out of this onto my Q-tip and I'm just gonna rub it onto the nib, just making sure to cover the whole thing, both sides, inside and outside. 
and then I'm gonna let it sit for about a minute and then just take a cloth, microfiber or paper towel and just clean it off. You can run it through water, you can clean it off. Now, oftentimes the first time you clean a nib, it doesn't work perfectly. You sometimes have to dip it in the ink and see if it works and if it doesn't, you go back and do it again. You can clean it again. And after you've done this a few times, your nib is prepped for the future. You don't have to keep coming back and doing this, but if ever your ink isn't sticking to your nib, it's probably because there's oil residue on it. So once you've prepped your nib and it's all cleaned off, you can just stick it in the holder, grab your ink, open it up and dip your nib into the ink and you're ready to go. Again, this is a very quick explanation of how this all works, so I'm not going too far into it. I actually teach this a lot more in my free course. If you wanna come and join it, it's showmeyourdrills.com. I'll link to it down below, but I just wanted to mention that because I'm not actually showing you how to use it. I'm just explaining it in this video. Okay, next question is what exact tools should I buy if I wanna go and get this? So I've told you you need a holder and a nib and ink, but what kinds? What, what exactly do you need to be looking for? So my recommendation for beginners is that you buy relatively inexpensive tools up front. Okay, so these two holders that I have here, these are speedball holders. These are just plastic. You can usually get them for $3 or so at the art store. And these work perfectly fine for a beginner. These are what I started on. These are what many people start on. This is what I give out in my workshop kits. So this is a straight holder. This is an oblique holder. And the difference is this one holds the nib straight in front. This one holds the nib tilted on an angle. So if you wanted to write on more of a, a traditional angle, the oblique is great, but I also think it's totally fine and reasonable to start with a straight holder because you're more used to holding it in your hand that way, like a normal pen. A lot of the times you can find these that come in two packs, so that's great. The other thing is if you see other holders that look like any of these, there's some made of wood, there's some made of plastic, there's some made of metal, these ones have cork on them, all different things. Whatever you can find at your art store is really gonna be fine in terms of holder. And then once you get more advanced with this, you can buy some holders that hold your nib on a certain angle, or you can buy ones that are weighted in certain places for the way that you like to write, but you won't know that until you get really good at it. So find whatever holders you can, even if it's just these couple dollar speedball ones. The next important thing you're gonna need is a nib. This is a Zebra G nib. Now you'll see Zebra G, Nico G, Tachikawa G. Any of those nibs are really similar and they're great for beginners. They're a little stiffer, so they're not gonna, the, the tines aren't gonna spread super wide and let out a ton of ink and give you blobs. And they also are just like a nice stiff nib. So if you put lots of pressure on it, it's not gonna break, it's not gonna bend. It's great for beginners when you're just getting used to it, but it can still give you those really nice hairlines and, and thick lines too. So Zebra G, Nico G, a G nib. And I'm gonna put all these down below so that you know what I'm talking about, but that's essentially what you're looking for. Next up, you're gonna need ink. My suggestion is to use Sumi ink. This is Kuratake Sumi ink. And it's really just like a nice smooth ink and it dries really nicely on the page. It's not gonna give you clumps or anything. What I would not recommend is mixing your own inks right off the bat or getting any colored inks or metallic inks from the art store. Those are harder to work with and notoriously hard to work with. So find yourself a Sumi ink and if you can't find that, look for India ink. India ink and Sumi ink are both great for beginners. And then lastly, you're gonna need paper. You can't just use any paper for pointed pen because your pointed pen will stick in different, like it'll, it'll pull the threads out of lower quality papers and it'll just bleed and give you a mess. So my suggestion is to use Rhodia paper. And if you're a person who's done brush calligraphy before, you know all about Rhodia paper. It's just a great high quality, nice and smooth paper. So I would find this and my recommendation would be to get the grid version so you have guidelines on your sheet. If you can't find Rhodia paper, just look for a nice, high quality, smooth paper. You might look like a crazy person going into the art store touching the papers, but make sure it's smooth. And then if you ever try your pointed pen on it and it starts to bleed and fray and stuff, you know it's not good enough. You need a high quality, nice, smooth paper. So that's it for tools. And then lastly, how do you start practicing with pointed pen? What do you do? You just dip your nib in the ink and just start drawing lines? Not really, but kinda. I want you to start practicing with the basic strokes of calligraphy. You do not wanna grab a pointed pen and just start writing letters and words because it's gonna frustrate you and overwhelm you. What you wanna do is learn how to use the tool by practicing your drills or your basic strokes. And if you've never heard of what that means, you need to come and join my free course. It's called Show Me Your Drills. And I teach you all of this from the very ground up 
you learn about the tools, you learn about the strokes, and you practice them over and over and over again to build that nice foundation for you. So I'm gonna link to that down below for you, and I'd love to see you in it. And next I'm gonna link you to another video that I think you're gonna like that's sort of related to this, and I'll see you over there.